Good morning again. Good morning. The sermon title for today is Filthy Rich Towards Others. Filthy, filthy, filthy rich towards others. There was this church on the south side of Chicago, and they had a wonderful outreach program to young people in the community. It wasn't always that way, and it isn't that way today, but there was a brief moment in time where they were open and they were this dynamic program that did outreach to young people in their community. There was one girl that attended, her name was Kiera. She came by herself and she left by herself. They knew that she was the oldest of her siblings, so sometimes she would even have to leave because she needed to go home and take care of her siblings. But when she could always, she would attend. After some time in this program, Kiera began with her entrepreneurial spirit to make her own Bibles. She would tear pieces of paper and write words on them and share them. <clears throat> on those little pieces of paper would be something like, God loves you very much, or treat others nicely. She would fold them and then sell them for the stealing price of $2.00. She really got into making these Bibles, and if you were in the service, you could see her over on the side working on her Bibles. Whenever the youth program was open and she didn't have to babysit her siblings, Kiera could be found at this church. It was almost Easter, and one of the church members approached the youth program wanting to buy Kiera what she needed for Easter. She had seen Kiera's condition and thought for Easter it would be nice for this pre-adolescent girl to have a new outfit, something beautiful, something new, something not passed down. And so the program accommodated, accommodated this member's wish, and one of the people in the program picked Kiera up one day to go shopping. Lots of beautiful things happened in the program, but this kindness, this richness toward a child was up there on the top. Kiera was so happy to get her very own new dress, to get her very own new shoes, to get her hair done and accessories to glow, to go. The glow in her eyes was hard to miss. What we do for others is central to our faith. I know sometimes we have a lot on our own plates. We have a lot going on in our own lives. Sometimes it's just enough to stay on the road to kind of stay sane. And I know some of you are going through a lot right now, even as I speak. But it is part of our vocation to be sent into the world to operate on behalf of humankind. The Old Testament even had the nerves to call us stewards, that we were to be stewards, caretakers of the earth and all that is in the earth. This is where we find ourselves in the biblical text today. Pam just read for us, one brother complained to Jesus about the other. Does that feel familiar? The other brother is not sharing the family inheritance. So he complains to Jesus to do something about the fact that his brother is not willing to share the inheritance with the whole family. And what does Jesus say? Jesus says, I'm not getting into that. I'm not touching the drama between you and your brother. But then he turns to those gathered and starts signifying anyway. And he says these words, watch your greed. Being greedy is a temptation that will trip you up for sure. Do not let it get you. It will lead you down a path that is not good for you. I can recall getting off strip a little bit that, uh, Kevin Hart was saying, you know, he came from a poor environment, but when he invited his family out and his dad did not know the whole spread was free, he was like taking stuff and putting his pockets and he kept coming back to the table. Do not let it get to you. It will lead you down a path that is often not good for you. And then Jesus begins to talk about one man who grew this crop. It was an abundant crop, and he had so much, he had to ponder, what am I going to do with my abundance? What a beautiful problem to have, to have so many resources that you have to ask, what am I going to do with all of it? Now, if I asked some of you all, you probably would come up with a lot of possibilities for what he could do with his abundance. 
But for this fictitious guy in this text, he thought, I'll build a larger barn to store my grain and goods. Clearly, he was the inventage of storage units, amen? <laughs> and God says, your life ends here. He warns against, in this text, storing up in excess. He warns against green, greed. The dictionary defines greed as intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth, power, or food. Theologian Reinhold Niebuhr described greed as the lack of security and certainty in a person's life. That is actually when folks are emotionally and spiritually bankrupt that they grab onto things to give them something. It's not called retail therapy for no reason, right? <laughs> Niebuhr says this, man is like the animals involved in the necessities and contingencies of nature. But unlike the animals, he sees this situation and anticipates its perils. He seeks to protect himself against nature's contingencies, but he cannot do so without transgressing the limits which have been set for his life. Therefore, all human life is involved in the sin of seeking security at the expense of other life. Do any of you remember Old Country Buffet? How, how, okay. When I first came to Chicago, those restaurants were popular. It was like, people were like, you want to go to Old Country Buffet after church on Sunday? I know it wasn't United Church of Hyde Park. I was at a different church then. But more or less, you pay a certain amount, right? And then you're entitled to go in, and you're entitled to do what? Eat as much as you want. For poor and working class folks, it was the hookup. People bought their whole families to Old Country Buffet. Now I have another question. Have you ever observed people in Old Country Buffet? I mean, no, really. People miss meals and get their stomachs ready to eat as much as they can. With such abuses, some restaurants had to say you could only stay for so many hours because families would set up camp and be prepared to stay for a while because they were going to get their value. And then they had to set up the rule, you can only eat what you can eat. You can take nothing home. So if you eat four bites of that cake and you can't eat the last bite, you can't take it home. You have to leave it at Old Country Buffet. Unless you're with a group of people that bought the Ziploc bags there are those people, too, that would just put the stuff in the bags and put them in their purses and sneak them out. Honestly, you all, these places encourage greed. But our culture and marketing encourage greed. Greed is offered from the ghetto all the way to the White House. Greed attempts to convince us that we do not have enough. We don't have enough knowledge. We don't have enough fame. We're not important enough. We don't matter to anybody. We don't have enough possessions. Inevitably, we feel like we are not enough. It also convinces us that we have nothing to give. Many, many churches feel like they have nothing to give. Greed makes us selfish. More, 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 like the man in this text. This is not a sermon about not saving. It is wise to put something towards tomorrow. It is wise to have money for a rainy day. It's wise to pay into a retirement fund if life allows that for you. These are all wise things to do. But it is also wise to give to this moment, to today. How many times have you learned someone died and you said, I wish I had called them? Wish I had seen them one last time. We think that often when people pass. And it seems like with as many people as we know, every other day someone is transitioning. This text is calling us to put aside what we need for ourselves, which is different from greed. It's different from hoarding. It's different from excess. Be generous in service to God. The last scripture in this text, in our text, says be rich towards God. In other words, be rich toward others. What does it mean to be rich towards others? Well, I'm so glad you guys are curious and want to know. But first of all, I want to talk about what it doesn't mean. The goodwill, 
the goodwill that happens to be located in New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont throws away, <clears throat> threw away in the past year 13 million pounds of waste. Technically, other people's garbage. Across its location, well-intended patrons bring in truckloads full of treasures. However, some people make questionable judgments. The director over these facilities says, one person bought in a stained lampshade that is literally falling apart. There's a small table with a missing leg, a cracked purple food storage container with a used sponge. Oh, and a lot of people bring in broken glass. Goodwill does recycle a lot of what it gets, but it's a lot of it they can't use, and so they end up spending $1 million a year on their trash bill. This is covering 30 stores. So now she gives out two questions for those who want to donate. Would you buy it in this condition? And second, would you give it to your judgmental mother-in-law in this condition? And if you can say yes to those two things, we'd love to have your items. A long, long time ago, I was listening to Joyce Myers, and I remember this episode where she said the Lord told her to give away some of her dresses to a lady in her church who was going through a difficult time. And of course, she went to the dress that she least liked. That's how we operate as humans. And God said, she said, no. And then she's like, okay, God, not that dress. And she chose another one, and God said, no. So after a while, she got the hint that she wasn't going about this the right way. What was God trying to say to her? Through a series of no's, she landed on a dress that she really liked. Giving another person something you don't want isn't really stretching yourself, and yet we do it all the time. She said God was trying to teach her that when you really give, when you really give filthy rich towards others, it's a sacrifice. It costs you something. Giving to others should cost us something. That day, Joyce gave to this church member something that she really liked and prized, and the church member was really excited. A classmate of mine married a prestigious doctor, and he always was helping this person or that. Now he has Alzheimer's. She shares her journey with him on Facebook. The world cares for him now, and she shows up daily to make sure he eats and play games. She curses Alzheimer occasionally here or there, but two days ago they celebrated 60 years of marriage. The last two have been in Alzheimer world, but that hasn't stopped her at all. Her daughter wrote these words, 60 years, wow. When I think of longevity and perseverance and love and partnership and commitment and strength, loyalty, God-fearing trailblazers, dedicated humility and endless love, I think of you two. Mommy and daddy, 60 years has brought many highs and lows, but through it all, you endured them together, hand in hand, nose to nose, eye to eye, side by side. As a little girl, I'd watch the love the two of you had for one another, from rubbing each other's feet until you fell asleep, to doing the bump at parties, to randomly gazing into each other's eyes to steal a kiss or three. I pray to have this kind of love with my mate. Although this season mommy is not the most ideal, your love still prevails. Happy 60th anniversary. I love you both to the moon and back. When I see her, feeding her husband, playing games, being on that journey. I'm like, that is what it's like to be filthy rich. That's what it's like to be filthy rich towards others. Today, I'm grateful that I have seen this richness right here in United Church of Hyde Park. You guys are a humble brunch and you don't brag, but I have seen so many of you take care of each other. Sometimes I'll discover, because you guys don't brag about it, that one of you's done something kind for another. These are the things, there are things that I may not know, but I do know that here at United, your kindness and your love for one another is real. You are living the Bible out through your service to others. 
And that's not what's lifted up in the spotlight, but that's what's lifted up in this text today. You are choosing not the path of greed, but of service to others. In fact, I've heard some of you say, I don't feel right if I can't serve another human being. United Church of High Park, let us continue. Let us know that we are doing the work of God. Let us continue to be rich, my friends, toward God. In other words, let us be rich toward each other. Let us be rich to those in our community. When COVID first hit, I would hear some of the leaders saying, how do we make sure everyone is covered? I knew that we were all on the same page. And throughout COVID, we work together. We are still today $1,200 away from our camp goal. So I'm appealing to those of you that hear us on Spotify and Instagram, YouTube and Facebook, if you're hearing this, hey, we take these kids to camp. We'd love for you to give. Sometimes I push, but I hear that the squeaky wheel does get noticed. We're going to take up an offering for Mina today who dedicated a lot of time towards helping wage in with media. He misses her a lot and some of us miss her as well. If you guys haven't noticed, the cordless mic goes in and out <laughs> and it costs a thousand to replace it. So I need some of you today to be rich. I need some of you to be rich out there and I need you to be rich toward each other. I need you to be rich towards God and I need you to be rich toward the church. So I'm gonna push a little bit. We are one of those churches that does not ask a lot for money and I was a part of a church that asked, they kept you, they asked three times and they made sure they collected a lot. We are that church, we'd hate to ask for money, but sometimes it's important that we do. And so I'm gonna ask you to be rich, rich, rich. I'm simply putting it out there that this is the day where we're gonna do a GoFund Us offering. When I was in school, there was this secretary that was so sweet and so often the students, when they went on vacation and graduate school and came back, they would bring her stuff and she would sit it up on her shelf, but it would be chocolate and teas and coffees. And so one day I saw a souvenir and over time it just sat there and it collected dust. And I said, hey, are you gonna eat that? And she was like, no, 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 this is special. She could not bring herself to open any of her gifts and so they remained visible and stored for others, but she never ever used any of it. I think the text today is challenging us not only to save, but to resist the temptation to be greedy and hoard, to resist the temptation just to store up, and more than anything, to be present to the opportunity to share what we have with others. You're richer than you know, because richness is not just about money. There's a spiritual richness that is real, that is needed in our world. So today I began with a girl child who is now grown adult, probably with kids of her own. As a child, she was poor. She was poor by birth, but that had nothing to do with her worth. She could only wear what was bought for her, but her life, her life and her light. Her Bibles expressed the God she had experienced at this new church that loved her very much, that loved everybody. And in that light, she grew and she flourished. And one Easter at this church, the whole church embraced the son who had risen. The story was told again as often it's told Sunday to Sunday, but definitely on Easter, you have to hear the story about the resurrection of Jesus. And people put on their best. If they don't put on new clothes, they go in the closet and they pick out something a little bit more special. And kids were being adorned in different outfits with pastel colors. And as special as the service was at this church and other churches across the city, I believe no one shone more brightly than Kiera as she showed up that day. Hair nicely done, a beautiful dress and shoes and socks and jewelry. Kiera was more radiant than usual, holding her head up high as she walked into church. And all because someone chose to be rich towards us, chose to be rich towards her. Let us good people of God be rich be always rich, rich towards each other. Amen.